Good morning. It's, uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be able to bring you the word this morning and I'm, uh, I'm uh, praying that God will be able to speak to you uh, this morning uh, out of his word. But, uh, but I want to uh, start off uh, with a question to you this morning. And uh, my question is, have you ever been to um, the beaches with those uh, big sand dunes um, that, you can, uh, that you, you can see that goes real far down? And, uh, and if you have, uh, as a kid or an adult, you, you understand and know how fun they can be and, uh, and what a joy they can be to be around. And uh, I remember one time I was with some mates and, uh, and we got there early and as, as guys do, when we see a, a big slope with sand on the beach, our first thought and instinct is to build a jump. And so as soon as we get there, we get started and we, we build this jump on the, on the sand and, uh, and make it as big as we possibly can to be able to slide down this jump on boogie boards and land into the water. So then we went ahead and built it, and, and when it was time, we were ready. My, uh, my mate went first and at full speed, launched onto the sand from the dunes, hit the jump, got huge air, and landed in the water. And it looked unreal. And then I was up. You know, you know those moments when it looks really fun until it's your turn? Yeah, that was, that was me. That was me. I was pumped for my turn, but then I realized... I was next. My heart started to pound out of my chest. Nerves flooded me and I started to sweat and shake. My mouth went dry and, and suddenly it looked a lot bigger than it was when I was laughing at my mate thinking how cool it was. Internally, I didn't think I could look as cool as he did, go as far as he did. And the what ifs were going through my head like, what if I jump and don't do it right? What if I go down and land wrong? What will my mum think if I hurt myself? I just didn't know. I just didn't think I could do it. But my mate spurred me on though. He said, come on, you can do it. You can do it. And so me being somebody who loves a challenge, I was like, yeah, you know what? I can do it and I'm gonna do it. But there was a lot of pressure though to perform now thanks to my mate because of how cool he looked. Everyone was expecting something amazing. So I looked down, took a run up, took a jump, and went for it. I got huge air, but realized mid-air that I had jumped too far, too high, and when I hit the ground, I put the board down first on the front of the board. And if you know gravity, you know that's not a good thing at all. At full speed, the board dug into the sand. I fell forward and in front of everybody watching, I did a massive face plant skid down this hill. And, uh, and I had sand everywhere. In my eyes, I was eating sand. In my nose, in my ears, it was everywhere. I was, uh, I was very, very embarrassed. But you know what? Myself and my ego when I was younger wanted to have another go. And, uh, and so my mate helped me again and I listened this time because I did it wrong the first time. He said to me, do it like this. All you gotta do is jump, keep the front of the board up and slide down on your belly. Now this was great advice, but I was thinking at the time, you could have told me this before. But you know what? Very bravely though, very bravely, I had another go. And, he, uh, and I did what he told me to, and, and his help worked. I went slid down the whole way, hit the jump, landed into the water, and it felt unreal. I thought I looked so cool. But this morning, why do I share this story? Well, like me on the dunes, sometimes we face challenges in life that are big, and we doubt ourselves. And this morning, I want to share a story of someone in the Bible who, who took on a pretty big challenge themselves, although theirs was a much greater challenge than mine on the sand dunes. And of course, I'm talking about Moses and the, the famous burning, uh, burning bush calling from God in Exodus chapter 3 that uh, Dad read earlier. Moses was called to do something he wasn't sure he could do, but against all odds, God used him greatly. 
And I believe this story can encourage you about how God can use you and I miraculously in our ordinary lives today. And so Moses in Exodus 3 that we read before, at this point in life, he wasn't a fearless young man. He wasn't a confident, natural born leader. In fact, he was a fugitive hiding from his past. He was a man who fled from Egypt to the wilderness after killing an Egyptian when no one could find him. He was for 40 years tending to sheep and living a quiet life away from Egypt. Moses was probably living a comfortable life when out of nowhere, God interrupted his ordinary life. Moses sees a bush that's on fire but weirdly isn't burning up. So as he went over to have a look, God called out to him from this bush and reveals himself to Moses saying, Moses, Moses. God tells him that he has heard the cries of the Israelites and that he is to go back to Egypt from where he fled to set the Israelites free from slavery and lead them to the promised land in Israel. And now I want to skip ahead a little bit to Exodus 4, and we're going to summarize just from chapter 1 to 17 here. Moses then asks God in this bit, what if they don't believe me or listen to me and say, the Lord didn't appear to you? Well, God gave three signs for Moses to use so that they would believe him. Firstly, that his staff that he had would turn into a snake and then turn back to his staff again. He said that this is so that they may believe the Lord has appeared to you. Then the second leaf, the second one, was that his hand would turn white as snow when he put it in his cloak, and then when he took it out again, it would be restored. The Lord said after this, if they don't believe you or pay attention to the first sign, they will pay attention to the second Finally, he said, if they don't believe the first two signs or listen to you, take some water from the Nile and and pour it on the ground and it will become blood. But Moses said to the Lord in verse 10 here, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and tongue. Then the Lord said to him, who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute? or deaf, or seeing, or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, I will be your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But Moses responded again and said, oh my Lord, please send someone else. Then the Lord's Lord's anger burned against Moses and he said in verse 14, Is there not Aaron, your brother, the Levite? I know that he can speak well. Behold, he is coming to meet you, and when he sees you, he will be glad in his heart. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth, and I will be your mouth, and with his mouth, I will teach you both what to do. He shall speak for you to the people, and he shall be your mouth, and you shall be as God to him. And take your staff in your hand, which you will do the signs. Moses, after hearing all this, eventually agreed to listen, obey, and trust God. Through God's help, he led his people out of the powerful hands of Pharaoh, and eventually his people entered the promised land like he said they would. It's one of the most amazing stories of how God used a nobody and made them a somebody that we all still know 2,000 years later. Moses, from being very ordinary, became something extraordinary. And that's the title of my message this morning, Ordinary to Extraordinary. And so what now? That's a great story, but what now? Well, what can we learn from Moses in our own lives? I believe there are are three important points to be taken from this. Hold you in a few seconds of suspense. But point number one this morning that I want to point out to you here is to be open to God's voice. Moses firstly teaches us the importance of being open to God's voice. 
And so once again, while tending to his flock, he came to Herod, mountain of God, and encounters the burning bush. God talks to him through it, and the Bible says Moses listens and answers, here I am. You know, at this point, God asks uh, Moses to take his sandals off uh, because it has become holy ground. Though it was a very ordinary place, the place had become extraordinary because of the presence of God. But look, to be honest, I highly doubt that Moses responded in a calm and composed manner, standing there saying, ah, yes, it is the Lord speaking Here I am, Lord, I'm listening. It's a burning bush. No, it was God speaking through a burning bush. And look, I can't imagine this bush being like in kids' stories that get told where it's this little shrub. No, I can imagine this this bush being a a really big bush and it's on fire multiple meters in the air because our God isn't small. And I think he would have had a reaction more like us if we saw this bush in the middle of a desert, standing there going, whoa, this bush has just burst on fire out of nowhere. What is, what is going on? Where, where's the water? There's nowhere because I'm in a desert. I can't put this out. What do I do? Lord, here I am. Help me. The Bible even said Moses hid his face because he was scared. Despite though his fear, during an extremely stressful moment, Moses listened and answered God saying, here I am. We in all situations need to be ready and listening for God's voice saying, here I am. Are you in your life ready and listening this morning? When we open ourselves to hear God, we need to obey what he says for us to do. You know, it says in the Bible, ask and you shall receive. This means that when you ask God to use you, he will use you, but not for you and your own life, but instead to see his kingdom grow. And through this, he will lead you and prepare you for it. And you know, here Moses heard God clearly through a burning bush. And and look, we probably can't can't expect to hear God through a burning bush, right? That's probably not going to happen. So it's important that we listen in ways that God asks us to in the Bible. He asks us to listen and hear firstly through Scripture. The Bible is the primary source of communication with God. 2 Timothy 3, verse 16 to 17 says, All scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. You know, the Bible isn't just a book, but it's, it's the breath of God. It's not an option to read. It is essential for our lives. If we treat reading scripture as an option, we risk missing what God may be wanting to teach us and show us through his word in our own lives. So through scripture, but also through prayer. Through prayer, we communicate with God, just as we communicate with people and deepen our relationship that way. We deepen our relationship with God through constant prayer. The more time you spend in prayer, the easier it becomes to hear his voice. Philippians 4, verse 6 to 7 says, Do not be anxious about every, anything, but in every situation, not some, but every situation, through prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. And finally, he also asks us to listen through the Holy Spirit. You know, the Holy Spirit is, uh, lives inside of us and is our guide and counselor to help us remember what God has said. 
John 14, 26 says, But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you all things and remind you of everything I have said to you. You know, the key here is when you ask, listen to him. Don't always keep talking, but spend some time listening to him. Don't listen to the world. Don't listen to celebrities. Don't listen to political figures in your life. They won't fulfill you because only God can fulfill you. Listen to him. Seek the will and the heart of God for your life, and he will bless you. So point number one this morning, be open to God's voice. Point number two, be willing to obey. Secondly, this story teaches us that God doesn't just want us to listen, but he wants us to obey. Moses, after walking over to this burning bush and hearing God talk to him through it and telling him what he wants, to, what he wants him to do, says to God, who am I to do this? I don't know what to say. They won't believe me. I can't even talk properly. Please send someone else. He looked at his past mistakes, his weaknesses, and doubted himself. He told God that he had the wrong guy and that God had made a mistake by asking him. Why me? Doesn't that sound familiar? How often do we get inside our own heads, compare ourselves with others, and start looking at everything wrong with us? I'm not academic like them. I'm not talented like they are. I can't communicate things well like them. I'm not strong like they are. Look at their resume. I can't compete. I'm not popular like them. Why me? You know, personally, this sounds a lot like me. I struggle academically compared to others. You know, my brother got straight A's in school while I struggled. I got held back a year in school by my teachers while my friends progressed ahead. I wanted to, I wanted to preach to young people and lead them in their faith. But I'm not academically gifted like my dad is. How could I do that when I don't even feel smart enough myself? Now in my adulthood, I still feel called to preach and lead young people in their faith. But you know what? I still find it hard to study and prepare messages like this because I still don't feel academic or smart enough a lot of the time. Of all people for him to choose from, why me? And look, I, I don't say this for you to feel sorry for me this morning. Please don't. I say this to you because despite my weaknesses and insecurities, I know God has called me and still wants to use me regardless of them. He helps me, he leads me, and he is growing me. You know, with all the excuses and, and doubts that Moses had, God had a response to Moses in promises that are for you and I today. He said, I have sent you. I will be with you. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will teach you. And I won't leave you. That's what he said to Moses, and that's what he says to us today. The question still begs, though, why would God choose someone like Moses? Well, because simply God wanted a man that would obey his word and depend upon his spirit. He had a plan to work through Moses. He wanted a humble vessel which he could show his glory not Moses' glory. He had nothing but his flock left, and God knew his heart for him. 
You know, God didn't just choose a name out of the hat and say, oh, Moses, that's, that's good enough. No. He chose Moses specifically and had a plan to use him. You know, when God calls us, let's be honest, it can be scary. We come up with our own excuses and insecurities on why we can't do it like Moses did. But like Moses, God chooses us specifically. This is when we must rely on his spirit and obey him. We need to remember that it's not about us. It's about the Lord and his kingdom. He uses us not for our glory, but for his glory. 1 Corinthians 10.31 says, Whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Whether big or small, whether it feels insignificant to you, your obedience can create a pathway for others to see Christ. And so this morning, are you willing to step out in faith and obey God's calling in your life, even if you don't feel ready or good enough? Point number one this morning, be open to God's voice. Point number two, be willing to obey. And point number three this morning is to trust in him. Finally, Moses teaches us about trusting in God's plan. Moses listened, obeyed, and trusted God through the whole journey. But it got worse before it got better for Moses. There were, there were resistances, there were plagues, there were setbacks. But you know what? Each time Moses obeyed, God showed up. God parted the Red Seas when it seemed impossible. God gave them manna to eat when they had nothing. And Moses ended up leading God's people out of Egypt, out of slavery in Egypt, like God promised he would. When God calls us, we need to trust that he will be with us every step of the way, guiding and providing for us, just like he did for Moses. The Bible says in Ephesians 3.20, God is able to do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine according to the power that is within us through Christ Jesus. You know, we don't have the power Moses didn't have the power. God did, and God does. It's not us, it's him. You know, and we don't need to have all the answers. Moses didn't know how he'd set the Israelites free. He only knew that God had called him to go, and that was enough. We need to, and are called to be walking by faith, and not by sight, trusting God will lead, provide, and bring us through. And I know it can be difficult, but God's calling on our lives should also be enough for us. Like little children who, who trust their parents without question, well, most of the time, we must trust God even when it doesn't seem possible. Little children trust because they have faith in you as a parent or guardian that you have their best interests at heart. You tell them not to cross the road and they listen, even when they may not know why. Because they trust you. That you are there to lead them and guide them, not hurt or mislead them. You know, we too need to trust God exactly like this, even when it doesn't seem possible and we can't see what he's doing. You and I need to trust that we are safe with him because he is leading and guiding us because he is good. This morning, are you trusting God with the unknowns in your life? Are you willing to take that first step 
even when you can't see the whole picture. And as the band come up to join me, Moses thought his own shortcomings and weaknesses would disqualify him, but they didn't. He listened to the Lord. He obeyed when he didn't know why, and he trusted him through it all. You know, the Lord didn't choose Moses because he was extraordinary, but chose him because of his humble heart. He knew Moses would obey his word, depend upon his spirit, and he knew that he could show his glory through Moses to hundreds of thousands of people. Hey, did Moses deserve for God to use him? No. Do we deserve for God to use us? No. But God doesn't look at your mistakes, your downfalls, your weaknesses, your circumstances, or whether you're extraordinary or not, to be the factor of whether he uses you. He is simply looking for a humble and willing heart, someone who will listen, obey, and trust him, someone who will be faithful to him and is willing to let them, and is willing to let, uh, let him work through them for his glory. Through Moses, God's calling and destiny for the nation of Israel was established. So today, where are you? Are you listening to God's voice in your life? Well, if you aren't, can I encourage you to listen to Him? Are you willing to obey His word and and step out in faith? If you aren't yet, can I encourage you, obey him. Are you trusting in him with the unknowns in your life? Well, if you aren't, can I encourage you to trust him. The key message today is that through Moses and this story, we can have confidence and know that God can and will use anyone, regardless of who you are, your shortcomings, circumstances and insecurities if you believe in him. Maybe God is telling you to take a leap of faith in your life to listen, obey, and trust him, but you're not sure. Whatever it is for you, remember Moses, the same God that wanted to show his ability through Moses' ordinariness to do something extraordinary through him, wants to do the same thing with you today. Let him work in you. Let him lead you, guide you, and watch what he might do through you. Listen to him, obey him, and trust him. Say yes to God this morning.